At first, it may appear that there are four unknowns, H, D, E, and B. While we only have two equations, Ampere's and Faraday's law, to solve for these four unknowns. However, if you look in any electromagnetics book, you will find also what are called constitutive relations. There are two of them. The constitutive relations describe how a material responds to the presence of electric and magnetic fields. For example, the first equation here describes how the total B field changes inside of a material having a permeability, mu. And the second equation here describes how the electric field changes inside of a material having a permittivity, epsilon. So returning to Maxwell's equations, on the right sides of these equations, if we can relate D to E using D epsilon E, and B we can write as being equal to mu H, it turns out that there are just two equations and two unknowns. So we could choose to solve for E and H here, as shown on this slide, these are all the ones in the red boxes. Or we could reverse it and solve for D and B, for example. That's another example. But let's just go with E and H, which is more common. Now, we could just dive right in and try to solve these two equations for our scenario of interest. But it would be nice if we could simplify things a bit to get us started. The problem we're trying to solve here is three-dimensional. The person has a finite size in three dimensions, for example. But it'd be nice to start simple rather than just jumping right in and trying to solve the full problem in three dimensions. So to help us get started, let's simplify the scenario even just to one dimensions to get us started. If we can find a way to solve Maxwell's equations using a computer in one dimension, we can later try to expand it to two dimensions or three dimensions. So take a minute and make a quick sketch of what this problem would look like in one dimension.